All right, here we are. Now we're back. All right, now I don't have to worry too much about pop-up messages and things coming up on the screen. So we'll get this going. Let's see here. We'll get that cleared, and we are ready to go. Good morning, everybody. I'm Hot Rod Bob. you got gas, morning edition, and we're going to talk about uh, car plaques. Now, not the little dash plaques you get when you go to a car show for being there as a participant, but the plaques you see on the back of cars or on the back window of cars to signify what car club you're in. And this is something that started back in the 1930s, they're estimating, and it was a bunch of guys that were out racing, maybe at the dry lakes or what have you, or guys that gathered as a group, and they decided to make a club out of it, and they wanted people to know what that club was or who they belonged to. So they came up with these plaques. They were license plate size initially, and they were hand-painted. That's how they started doing it. Well, later on, no one knows exactly when, someone had the bright idea of, why don't we cast these in aluminum? So they did. Road Kings, like Don Gady and I belong to, have had their plaque going since the early 1950s. But in Burbank alone... That city, a small city, had over 30 car clubs. Yeah, and I've got a link that'll show you exactly where those clubs were and how many clubs were in your city. That's right, we'll get into that a little bit later on. But how did they do this? Well, they started out, like I said, painting a little plaque, which had usually a club logo or, or some sort of design and the club name on it. Someone decided to cast them. Well, how did they make the casting? Well, if you were in metal shop in high school like I was, you learned how to make sand castings. And they used sand, a high compression based product that was moist. It was sand or silica or what have you. And you compacted it in a mold and you used a piece that replicated the part that you wanted to make. So in the case of a car club plaque, you had to have an original or a mold maker piece. Now, how'd you do that? Well, a lot of guys carved them out of linoleum, carved them out of wood. You had some guys who were very artistic. You could draw it out on wood and carefully carve out the design you wanted. And we did that. We made wood replicas of what we wanted to make, whether it was a part that we were casting for a car or a uh, just for the sake of casting something. And that was something we learned in high school metal shop. So what they did is they started doing that. Now, O'Brien Trucker, who is one of the biggest companies that makes these car club blacks, uses an etching process. They use machines. They use all sorts of things to get exact duplicates of what the plaque is supposed to be. Now, they take that, use a sand casting. That's either a water-moistened sand or oil. Believe it or not, they use an oil, and that compresses and holds the sand in place nice and tight. You put in your sprue holes where the aluminum will be poured into, and you've made a plaque. It's a slow process, but it is still used today. Uh, some There are some die-cast companies that do this. Now, initially when the car plaques came out, it looked like a license plate. And it was about the size of a license plate. People put them in their back window or hung them from the back bumper. A lot of guys still hang them from the back bumper. Or they mount them above the bumper or on the bumper or what have you on the back of the car. Now, along the way, back in about the 1960s, they estimate, some of the car clubs did something different. Instead of putting the name of the club in the plaque, the name went on top of the plaque. Interesting look. Okay. That worked for a while. Then some of the guys said, well, let's do something a little bit more artistic. And Bobby Dye is saying he's got four from clubs he's belonged to over the years. I've got about two or three myself from different clubs I've belonged to. Well, they made it artistic. So they carefully drew out, say, their club name. And it looks very stylistic, very artistic. And that is what they cast. Now, originally, most people, when they did the castings, did it in aluminum. I mean... One guys I heard, uh, I read about, they were donated all their old beer cans, soda cans, melted those down for the aluminum to make the plaque. True, it happens, it does. Then other guys said, and I've got one from one club I belong to, that is actually cast in brass. 
really nice looking and the brass is very highly polished now what O'Brien truckers and others do is they cast these plaques for people and then they would send them to the club for final finishing the rough cuts the rough sanding would be done to get the shape knock off the casting sprues where the fluid was or the molten metal was poured into and then sand the lettering or the top part with the ID or club logo and then leave it at that and they were raw cast the clubs like the Road Kings will get them they paint them black or whatever the color of the club may be and then carefully clean off the areas that are raised now in some cases they polish them before they're painted or they just use a, a sand paper or emery paper to clear them off so that the painted areas are not touched and the raised areas stand out other clubs like the ones that are doing the stylized ones and we see a lot of the lowrider clubs here in southern california using this process where it's just the names of the club there is no license plate size plaque it may be a large very skillfully and artistically drawn letters that are across the back and usually in the rear window they will just polish those and they are highly polished and look really cool in the back now the latest trend in the club plaques is to make the letters or have different shapes not just the license plate a lot of guys uh, there's one club called the stugats their plaque is license plate size but the raised portion looks like it was welded with a stick welder it just looks like beads of weld into the club's name some guys do the reverse where the plaque is flat and the name is cut into that flat plaque rather than raised the raised area is flush but the name of the club is inset in other clubs well they do all the things they may have just something simple simple lettering some have logos some even have odd shapes or the border is actually artistically done with whatever the case may be there's a uh, club called the asphalt hooligans and they have many different shapes around the border of the plaque rather than just a flat plaque there's one club and the chompers that it looks like a a chopping thing a, you know a, a, whatever you call it it's shaped like a uh, an axe almost and that is their plaque it's not a rectangular plaque like everyone uses in most of the car clubs. The plaque is the butcher knife or the, the axe that they have. Now, a lot of them, like I said, are doing the, just the letters. They're doing them in stylistic ways. There's one club called the Solitos, and their name is both uh, solid and bored through. So part of the name looks like it's in a city and the letters are hollow you can see through the plate at that point and the city shapes of buildings is the outline with the outside letters the last two letters the last letter and the first letter those are solid like the buildings are so it could be real interesting it's another uh, club that has their letters in stylized form and then underneath is a solid piece that has their location so a lot of different ways of uh, Marquis Club has a what looks like an old uh, sword, and the word of their name of their club is on top of it in very fancy script. So car plaques have been around for a long time. Car clubs have been using them for a long time. It was to identify what club you were with. It was to identify and highlight the club you were with to let people know you belonged to a car club. Now, a lot of clubs don't have these. A lot of clubs do. But uh, it is something that came about, and they're saying the origins dates back to the 1930s, and it was based on racing clubs of the time. And they wanted to highlight that they were part of this racing group. So it was cool, and it was done. You got a plaque for the car club you belong to? I've got my Road Kings plaque. As a matter of fact, I can show you one of them. Stay there for a second. All right, here's one of the Road Kings plaques. Now, this is the car show plaque. The Road Kings give this plaque out. It was the trophy and is the trophy that we give out during our, our car shows. 
It is a replica of our car club plaque, except our car club plaque does not say car show. I'd show you my car club plaque, but it's downstairs. So this is a plaque. This one's done by O'Brien Trucking. And they got their logo into the back of the casting. And as you can see, it is a very flat piece in the back. They've done some finishing to it. And the front is etched. They use a special material. They acid etch or etch or laser cut the design into the base piece that's used to make the mold. And it comes out really nice. We then polish the edges and paint it and then wipe it all off where the paint is not supposed to be. So a lot of car clubs do this. I'm back, and I'm part of Two Tired Guys Productions. That's right, Randy Cardoon and I, Two Tired Guys, we've got talking about cars and gas, the great American auto scene. And we just dropped the last show, Thursday, for gas. We interviewed a great guy talking about some his car collecting and so forth. You can check it out. Please, take a look at gas and talking about cars. Talking about cars at radio.com. Gas at gotgas.com and right here. And we've got a Patreon page now where we're going to start putting stuff as well as YouTube. And the latest interviews we did with the Car Kings, the guys from Galp and Ford that are building these and restoring these wonderful pieces of automotive history. That just dropped. It's on YouTube now. Two tired guys talking about cars, gas on YouTube. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas, the morning edition. Hey, it's Monday, Memorial Day. For those of you that did serve in the military or your parents served in the military, thank you for being who you are and for your service to this country. You guys have a great day. I'm Hot Rod Bob. It's Memorial Day. And think about why we have the freedoms we do and why America is the country we live in and love. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas. Brought to you by the great people at Irwindale Speedway and Irwindale Drag Strip. We're hoping to open those places up next month if the state allows us to. Beach Underwriting Associates, Moon Eyes, Service Tech, where you can get all the equipment you need for that shop you're running, whether it's your home shop or a business shop. Service tech. Think about it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Valley Head Service will do the heads for you and build your motors. I got a 292 built in my 57 Ford. That is just so sweet running, you would not believe it. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You have a great day. You've got gas, the morning edition. Thank you for being here and being a gasaholic. Take care now.